Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wembley Womblies. Uh, taken on Plymouth Argyle today, which reminds me of arguably the best day of my life. Uh, the day that Wimbledon played at Wembley and beat Plymouth Argyle to go up to from the fourth tier of English soccer to the third tier. What an incredible day. By the way, we're in second place now. Um, that's still good. It's not as good as being in first place, so we'd like to finish in first. Mr. Managerino gave a nice pep talk right before the game where he said, guys, we're in second. I'd like us to be in first, and I was very moved by that. Uh, today, I'm going to solve problems because I'm in the problem-solving business. This problem comes from Julia, who donated the project for us. And by the way, there's George Long back in the squad after Rafa uh, had a game in League One, and I realized that we can't be starting 14-year-olds. I talk Is Mr. Managerino's hand disappearing into his jacket how does ea think that they're going to be in the esports business when they can't even get a hand to stand on top of a jacket today's problem comes from julia who donated the project for awesome and writes i'm going to lose my job soon not because i'm bad at it but because the position is going to go away I know I will need a new job at some point, but not when. What's more, I know I'm going to officer training school for the Air Force Reserve eventually, but not when. I've been accepted. I'm just waiting for the paperwork to process. Should I start applying for new jobs now without knowing exactly when I will have to disappear for nine weeks? Or wait until I have school dates to let any prospective employer know what's going on? All right, Julia. I'm going to level with, I'm a boss, okay? I'm, not, I'm, the, I'm the wrong person to come to with this problem because I have been my own boss for a long time and I haven't had a boss since I was 28 and when I did have a boss I was a terrible employee <laughs> um I wasn't particularly good at my job um but I always had really amazing kind generous bosses who uh wanted what was best for me and were not like in the business of uh you know exploiting my labor for uh, in order to, to turn it into capital that they could then uh, invest to become richer and richer. Like, I never had a boss like that. I never worked at a company like that. I always worked for uh, nonprofits and, and w for people who were really generous and, and wanted, um, wanted me to have a fulfilling professional life and um, obviously wanted what was good uh, for the magazine, but also most, you know, but, but you know, we're, we're generous people. Not all bosses are like that and not all companies are, are are like that and so i think that in general employees need to act in their own uh best interest and if you have a lot of like trust built up with the place where you work um and you have a lot of trust built up with the people you work with then that's great and that's awesome and and but don't let that trust i i just i i worry that sometimes i think people let um, they're like, their goodwill. Oh God, we're going to give up a goal. Oh God. Did that go in the back of the net? It did. They're celebrating. I mean, it's entirely my fault. Oh, I don't, and I don't like that celebration either. I just don't, I don't, it's, it's brutal. It's always brutal to see a ginger celebrate a goal against me. I mean, that's just the last thing I want is to see a ginger. I mean, I love seeing a ginger score, but not in these, not in this situation. How ugly are Plymouth Argyle's uniforms, by the way? Good Lord. Like, who approved that decision? Anyway, I'm obviously bitter. I, don't, I can't even deny it. I'm angry and I'm bitter. And I'm sorry. I want to apologize to my friends and family. I'm so bad at defense. But I'm also pretty bad at offense. Right. So I don't think that you should feel obligated to tell anyone. I, I believe I, I'm not positive about this because we don't have anyone here who's in the Air Force Reserves. But I believe the law is that employers must make room uh, for people who are in the Air Force Reserves. At least I think that should be the law because people who are in uh, who are serving in the armed forces um, in, a, in a reserve capacity in the National Guard or in, or in the you know reserves are, uh, are, are. Oh, God, are we really going to go down two nil? No, George Long. We just gotta get, gotta get our, gotta get our heads straight, guys. Come on. I mean, this Taylor guy is just ripping us apart. Could he be the replacement for Cody McDonald we've been looking for? Maybe. I really hurt myself there by touching my head at the wrong time, but it worked out. Um, so yeah, look for a job, and then when you go to officer candidate school, just remind your employer that uh, the law is that they 
have to hold your job for you while you are going to serve the country in uh, in the armed forces. And if your employer doesn't do that, then, you know, they have violated the law. It's John Green. It's John Green. It's a beautiful ball. Oh, it's off the post. Oh, he's got so much power. Even he doesn't know how much power he has. Oh, man, everything about it was perfect, except that it didn't go in the net. Mr. Managerino is devastated. I think you should look for a job now. Uh, and I think that if you find the right job, then then take it and worry about officer candidate school when it comes time to worry about officer candidate school. And if they say, I wish you'd, uh, by the way, I should say here that I am not an employment lawyer and I don't know anything about this. I'm just a person who plays FIFA while solving problems. Oh God, surely not George Long. I mean, George Long has kept it. It would be three nil. It would be three nil if it were not for his heroics. Let's face it. If Rafa were in goal, this game would not even be close. They've had seven shots. We've had one. And it, George Long is keeping us in it single-handedly. So, I mean, I'm very, very grateful to him. That's all I can say in this situation. It's John Green. That's a really good ball. He's going to, uh, he's, it's a controversial decision. He passes to his husband. Oh, and his husband finishes. It's John Green to John Green. It's my favorite connection. Oh, yes. Hooray. Oh, it's one, one. Oh, they kissed. Meredith, I've never seen them kiss before. That's so nice. They kissed right there in the middle of the pitch. It's beautiful. Two men who love each other, who parent a child together, and who are teammates in life as well as on the pitch. It's magnificent. What a pullback. It was controversial. Everybody wanted me to shoot, but I knew that if we could just get in that position, we would definitely score. Uh, other John Green to ball John Green, the John Green connection, the magic that has been keeping uh, the stars apart low these many years. Uh, I think you I think you have to look for a job that you want, basically. And if you get the job that you want, then they're going to be lucky to have you. And the nine weeks that you spend in uh, officer school is not going to be a problem for them in, in the long run, which is what matters. Uh, the only caveat to that is that, like, if you're intending to only have this job for six months, then I wouldn't do it. But... If you, if, if you are being, you know, honest with yourself and you think that this has a chance, a good chance of being a long-term job, man, we are still bad. That's, that, that hasn't changed. Um, if you think this has a good chance of being a long-term job, then I think it's a win for everybody involved. Oh, there is an injury. And I feel very bad about this because I believe it is the guy who scored the goal and we had two shots alone on goal. And it's, this is not fun to watch. Oh, they're calling on the trainer. It's never good to see a ginger down like this. Oh man, that's tough. What happened? Oh, he just I mean, I, I don't I don't feel like we're responsible for that. He need Darius Charles in the back. It's obviously just it's a bad injury though. He's touching the outside of his of his knee, which often means it could be ligament damage. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna do the right thing. We're gonna send the ball back. Um, and it's halftime. Well, nobody wants to see that, even in a fictional video game. I never root for people to get hurt. I think it's, uh, it's, I mean, that's one of the weird things about, about being a professional athlete is you're so, um, you're so reliant upon, you know, this deeply flawed vessel that is your body. But really, that's a problem that, that all of us have to one extent or another. I don't know why I did that. I want to keep on Vinny Thrill. And I'll bring, I'll bring on, I'll bring on Abdu later. It's only halftime. It's 1-1. We had a really bad first half, but we are going to have a good second half. Anyway, uh, I can't really solve your problem of not having a job because we don't currently have any job openings at Complexly. And also, I don't think that you live in Indianapolis. Uh, so I can't personally hire you. But like in the hypothetical, I was thinking about this because in the hypothetical where, where we hired somebody and then they said, oh, I have nine weeks of officer candidate school. If they said that like two weeks later, I mean, I, I would be a little bit bummed out, but I would also understand because it, they're not under an obligation to tell me that any more than somebody would be under an ob or I, again, I don't know the law here, but my feeling is like F, my personal ethical feeling is that, you know, like it's like it's like I don't feel like an employee would, or a potential employee would have an obligation to tell me that they were pregnant, for instance. 
uh, even though, you know, when the baby or, or that or that their spouse was having or, or partner was having a child or whatever, because even though we would lose that employee for a certain number of weeks, like I wouldn't want that to affect our hiring decision. I don't think that would be it just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't sit right with me. I don't again, I don't know what the law is, but that just seems it just seems wrong to me. So that's oh, it's got to be. But it isn't. But it isn't. It was somehow not. It managed not to be. Okay, another substitution for Plymouth Argyle with the front of the shirt is just, it's epic. It's epic in its terribleness. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would be, I don't think I would be bummed out if somebody said to me a few weeks in, like, oh, I, I didn't mention this during the hiring process because it would have been weird to, but uh, I'm going to need six weeks off or 12 weeks off or whatever because we, we're having a baby. I'd be like, oh, that's congratulations on the baby. Of course you didn't tell us. <laughs> I, I don't know. That, that would be my personal response, but I, 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 I don't know. Um, I took, and, and, you know, and I guess, I, I, I guess it just depends. I guess it also depends on, on the company and the nature of the work, which I don't know much about. Like we do a very specific thing here. Uh, and it's it, it, because we, the other, I mean, some companies like hate it when their employees go on vacation and, you know, try to are trying to, do, you know, m minimize that. I, I think that stuff, I, I, I think time away from work and not working all of the time is essential to being productive at work. I have friends who work 80 or 90 hours a week. And I think that in the, you know, the second half of those 80 hours a week, they are much less productive and they, 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 they get less done. They're less happy. They like, you know, they like their lives less. And that's, I don't know. That's just not, that's to me, that's not really what you want. But I also, we also don't try to maximize, you know, we're not really in the max revenue maximization business. We're not because like we're oh so high and mighty or whatever, but because Hank and I both have other, you know, other jobs that, that really, that that's what pays for, you know, our lives and then complexly sort of breaks even. Um, oh, that's a good job. That's good. And pays for, uh, pays for an, an AFC Wimbledon sponsorship. Um, <laughs> yeah. For the record, if, if you like support Crash Course on Patreon and you're worried that some of your money goes to the AFC Wimbledon sponsorship, it doesn't. I, just just to be clear, like we don't spend Crash Course money on the John Green stand. <laughs> we spend we spend John Green money on the John Green stand. In fact, that's why it has to be called the John Green stand instead of the Complexly stand or whatever, because uh, because otherwise it would uh, it would we would be we would be yeah it would technically be a violation of the law. The, the, I mean. In, I don't know anything about employment law, but I find corporate law to be astonishingly complex. That's got to be a goal. We're going to go up 2-1. Oh my God, it's magnificent. It is truly a work of art. Oh my God, that was magnificent. Wow. Wow. And after being completely dominated for the entire game, AFC Wimbledon, it's other John Green, goals from both John Greens, AFC Wimbledon comes back from the absolute dead, 1-0 down to 2-1 up. That's the way that we're going to win the league. Incredible scenes, as my favorite YouTuber, Dr. Benji FM would say, hashtag scenes, truly a work of art, just like other John Green's mustache. Wow. I mean, we got played off the pitch today uh, and we got very lucky. But you know what? If you're going to win the league, sometimes you've got to get lucky when you're not playing your best. And uh, it looks like this is going to be one of those times for us. Uh, I hope, by the way, that you've already gotten a job and this is already irrelevant. Uh, that is that is my hope for you and that everything has worked out. Thank you again. Um, for uh, donating the project for awesome. Mr. Managerino, pure unadulterated class, always making sure to applaud the fans, uh, but first shake the hands of his opponent, opposing manager. I don't like to brag, um, but I am an incredibly classy 75-year-old manager of a third-tier English soccer team. Thank you for watching. Best wishes.